Call it the new normal, or at least the next normal. In today's show, our experts talk about getting businesses back on track more than a year after the pandemic started. What does recovery need to look like? We talk to key members of a local task force. Plus, not all of the pandemic pivots have been so bad. We'll show you some of the coolest and most successful changes we've seen. Expert Connections starts now. Welcome to Expert Connections. I'm Julie Holton. It's no secret that small businesses are hurting from the pandemic. Figures show that roughly one third of small businesses across the country are shut down with many in danger of never reopening. For those that are operating, revenue is down significantly, as much as 31% compared to January of last year. And while employment rates have rebounded, which is good to pre-COVID-19 levels for high wage workers, they do remain significantly lower for those at lower wages. That's according to trackTheRecovery.org, a nonprofit based at Harvard. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our community, and they're nothing short of resilient, resourceful, and ready to rebound. Joining me now to talk about a massive collaboration underway to help keep these businesses going, we have Tim Damon, president and CEO of the Lansing Regional Chamber of Commerce, and Patricia Scott, an attorney at Foster Swift Law Firm in Lansing. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Julie. You are both a part of the Relaunch Greater Lansing Task Force, which is providing tools to help employers get back up and running, back to prospering, really, while also focusing on safety. So I'd like to start there. Tim, how is this task force and how has this task force been working with business leaders? You know, Julie, as we'll all recall a year ago at this time when um, when everyone began working remotely and offices and, and places of business were, were shut down, there was so much information coming at people. It was coming so fast and multiple sources, multiple, uh, you know, different organizations and whatnot. And so I think one of the things we did is when we pulled together the task force, which is really consisting of business education and healthcare professionals, it was about becoming and developing this almost like a portal that would funnel all of these resources into one place where an employer, an employee, whatever it might be, could kind of go there to kind of get access to the information they needed to one, potentially re-engage with their people to reopen safely and um, and so forth. And so uh, that was where Relaunch Greater Lansing was born. We, we've done a great job, um, I think, in providing all of those resources through website and some of the, the guidebooks and employee handbooks and so forth. And we're now kind of looking at what that next phase looks like. And that next phase is really kind of this vaccine phase. And, you know, I think everyone's beginning to kind of recognize and see where we are in this process and that there is a little bit of that, um, if you kind of use that light at the end of the tunnel, I think everyone's beginning to see that now that there's a there's a path forward and that's really where relaunch has, uh, has played. And you know what, I think one of the things we've tried to do is to make sure we're doing that in a very safe, environment and providing safety and a healthy work, you know, workplace for employees to re-engage, but also for customers and visitors to our, to our community. Absolutely, Tim. And I know that for businesses, there's been a lot of information out there. And so having one place that really has served as an aggregate for all of that information and information that can be trusted was really important. You mentioned the vaccine. I know that right now, one of the concerns for many people, um, for some, there might be mistrust of the vaccine. Others, kind of the opposite. They, they can't wait to get their hands on it. And of course, all of this has an impact on our businesses. What's the message from the task force about vaccine related questions? So I think one of the things we're continuing to hear from, um, you know, from the employers and businesses here, there's still just a, there's a hesitancy on, um, on getting vaccinated. And so I think one of the things that, that we're doing now, the next step for the, the relaunch task force is a couple, couple pieces. One is a uh, as an employee, our employer uh, sort of toolkit that kind of would help employers with what and how they need to engage with their with their people. So it could be everything from employee communications and how you host town halls and, you know, maybe a little different than a traditional town hall. It may not be the CEO that's the messenger on this. You know, it may be someone else within the organization to kind of go in and answer, you know, some questions and concerns that employees have. Um, so those frequently asked questions, it's about educating um, you know, the, the, the people there, it's about 
continuing to identify the needs. And so the, the surveys with what and how many of your people want to get vaccinated. So how do we do that and potentially doing some on-site surveys. And so I think all of that toolkit is really kind of helping employers to help their employees better understand the science and data and medicine behind the vaccine developments. And then the second piece of this and what we're working on is kind of this trusted voices uh, interview uh, segments where we will bring in um, you know community leaders here and kind of talking about again, these key pieces behind the science and data and medicine behind the vaccines and how we're making people feel a little bit more comfortable um, with where the vaccines are right now and what and why the importance of, uh, of getting vaccinated and really kind of helping get our economy back on track and, and reopen safely. Patricia, I wanna to turn to you now. Are there legal considerations for businesses related to the vaccine and, and really to all things related to COVID? What, what are some of these considerations? Absolutely, Julie. You're right. You hit the nail on the head. It's not just the vaccine, but it's all things related to COVID. And I wish there was an easy answer that I could give you, but sadly, it, or unfortunate, I guess, it's industry specific. And in particular, one of the main questions we get is whether or not you can enforce and make it mandatory to get the vaccine or require proof of getting a vaccine. And that too is industry specific. And I would recommend that our businesses and our listeners seek legal counsel in that regard. The main focus here for our folks is to stay informed and it's to do what's right, but it's to avoid liability. Resources that are available include, as Tim mentioned, the Relaunch Greater Lansing Task Force website that includes a couple of different toolkits. Within those toolkits, there are resources. So we have resources within resources. It's a great place for our listeners to go to. In addition to that, the Foster Swift website has a lot of information available on it as well. We do a very good job of pushing out the information as soon as it comes, which is a lot, as you can imagine. The key here is that ignorance is no defense. You need to get and stay informed and seek assistance. There's lots of people willing to help. Just let us know how we can do so. Patricia, thank you so much for that. And Tim, thank you. We have put links to all of these resources that have been mentioned, especially the Relaunch Greater Lansing Task Force and fosterswift.com. You'll find those links at wlaj.com. Just click the link for legal connections. While many companies were forced to make changes to keep going, not all of these pandemic pivots have been negative. In fact, we hope some are here to stay. Joining me now are marketing connections experts, Paul Schmidt from Unodus Multimedia, Jesse Flores of Super Web Pros, and Tim Haynes of Symposia Labs. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having us. Let's talk pandemic pivots, starting with this show, Expert Connections. Exactly one year to the day of this show launching on WLAJ, Expert Connections actually started as a Facebook Live series during the pandemic. Our very first guest was a cleaning expert who talked about COVID-19. From there, we interviewed experts on mental health, small business loans, legal issues, sales, and of course, marketing. Sound familiar? At M Connections, it was all about connecting our clients and the community to the answers that all businesses needed. In all, we've easily interviewed more than 100 experts over the last year. Now we are on the air to help businesses grow during this next phase. I know each of you have seen other really great examples of successful changes. Jesse, you work with a lot of brick and mortar businesses. What are some of the shifts that you've seen to move from the literal foot traffic to digital storefront traffic? Yeah, you know, there's no denying that um, small businesses and particularly local businesses were among the biggest victims of COVID-19. Maybe not because they were infected with the disease, but they were certainly infected with the economic fallout. And one of the first things that we saw um, was everyone trying to figure out what a transition to digital would look like. Um, for instance, we started seeing restaurants reaching out to figure out how do we get curbside pickup set up? Can we set up online ordering um, you know, without paying huge fees to DoorDash or, or Grubhub? We saw consultants and coaches and knowledge workers um, trying to figure out like, hey, I, I can't network anymore. I, you know, I can't go to that chamber of commerce event. How do I get people into, um, uh, into my ecosystem so that I can continue to deliver the value that I deliver? And so we, we were watching people pivot into developing things like learning management systems uh, or uh, online courses and things of that nature. Um, but we also saw some, some companies start to pivot into 
uh, trying to figure out how to replicate their brick and mortar experience online. One of our favorite uh, stories was a company called Playmakers, a big running store, e-commerce store in, uh, in the Lansing area. Um, you know, they have, they're, they're known for their great service and for helping people find the right fit. And they found a, a way to take that process and that in-store experience and bring it online via Zoom to help people still get that kind of fit and assessment and analysis that people were used to getting in store. And so they didn't let the pandemic stop them. Instead, they asked, how can we continue to add value to our customers through this and maybe a new and innovative way? And I think the most successful businesses are the ones that are asking that question and finding interesting answers especially the ones like you said, creating those digital experiences. Paul, your team shifted, talk about experiences. Um, you started adding this emphasis on live streaming and virtual events. You also were a part of a really unique in-person event, kind of a hybrid event, because I know a lot was also done live on social media. Um, but this event was socially distanced, but yet had enough traffic that uh, it backed up city streets in Lansing. This is a great story. Tell us about this. Well, what you're referring to is something that was completely not something I expected. It was called Carnival of the Creatives. And so what was really cool about this was it was kind of a, a collaboration between um, uh, downtown Lansing Inc incorporated which is a you know the the it's not really a dda but it's the organization that oversees the downtown lansing area as well as the artist's umbrella and opportunity arts and what they did was they took on halloween as a socially distant holiday incorporating artists who were who got hit pretty hard during the pandemic as well and they locked down a uh, uh parking garage and had families, you know, go up three, four flights, um, experiencing artists doing all sorts of art things and getting candy for their kids without leaving their car. So, and like Julie said, it backed up down the block so much so that the Lansing Police Department jumped in and helped um, steer the traffic correctly. So and they were happy to do so because finally people were able to be out and about, but socially distanced. I mean, talk about an incredible experience mm -hmm. done, um, you know, during the pandemic. Uh, yeah, I, I was blown away. I was one of the volunteers. I volunteered and I was like blown away about how many, it's like over 200 cars came through. It was amazing that this collaboration also happened within a, just a month span at tops. So they- Yeah, short they, amount of time they, to plan it and yeah, to execute it. Absolutely. Yeah, great yeah. example, Paul. Tim, let's talk about some of the fundamentals behind all of these examples that Jesse and Paul have given. How have you seen the pandemic change the work that you're doing? So as a marketing agency, we had the privilege of having already had embraced digital communication and working remotely. An interesting data point here, jobs that included work from home or WFH, as I like to call it, that is an option. Those sorts of jobs increased by almost fivefold in Q3, according to LinkedIn during 2020. So the work from home trend is here to stay. Dispersed teams are here to stay. It's now normal and professional behavior to have our kids or our cats interrupt our business meetings. And I celebrate that. And I think that we should all celebrate that because although I know it sounds a little bit crazy, you and you and me, we are all employees perhaps, but most certainly we are also people. And the brands that we are buying from need to realize that everything has now shifted. Value-based marketing is the future. If you do not embrace the digital trend that is happening at an accelerated rate because of COVID, not only will your business's revenue die, but your employees will leave. Absolutely. Yes, you're right. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. Tim, Jesse, Paul, thank you so much for your insights today. To see more from our experts, head to WLAJ.com and click the link for Marketing Connections. Pivot certainly has been the buzzword. When it comes to generating revenue growth, right now for many, that means identifying entirely new markets. Our sales connections expert, Sherry Pash, joins us to talk strategic growth. Hi, Sherry. Hey, Julie. I'm excited to cover this topic today. 
Me too, Sherry. So I know that many businesses we talk to, many organizations, nonprofits, they're all describing the recovery right now as a means of survival. So let's talk about tapping into new markets. First, how do you identify as an organization a new market? You know, like you said, markets are shifting for many businesses right now. So I think to, to identify that new market, we have to first understand for our customers and our clients, our members, donors, the people we've worked with for years, what has changed for them in their workplace, their operations, their product line, their service line. So I think knowing that uh, it's going to drive where we go with new markets and identifying those new markets. So a couple of things I would say to start with is to think about um What's your potential? What's your need client or member segments? And a couple of questions you can ask to do that is who's doing business with us now? Who, who's investing with us now? Who isn't that should be? And who do you want to do business with that isn't doing business with you now? Sherry, that's such an important topic because as you mentioned, so much has changed in the last year um, with the mm -hmm. pandemic. And so there may be people that you were regularly doing business with before that just are not there right now. Maybe they're not coming back. Right. Um, and so we really have to start to understand what does that market look like? Mm -hmm. And so really with that, that's where we're going to start to talk about um, creating a client profile, basically a customer profile that you can um, see where your gaps are and see what, why you want a new market and where that new market will be. So we want to define that market name or that client segment name. And you want to know currently, do we get business from this segment? What percent of our business is from that? So we can de decide our growth. Define the type of client that makes up this market. What is the DNA of this um, particular client customer? Describe where you're going to find this, this client from, which mark, where, where are they hanging out at basically? Are they hanging out in social media? Are they hanging out um, you know, in, in industry events, things like that. So we've got to define where we're gonna find these clients from. And what's really important is to know what type of business or revenue they produce. And that's important, right? We've got to know, are they, you're bringing in a, a lot, it takes a lot of work, but they'll bring in that little revenue versus that large revenue that is so important to sustain a company. So as we look at new markets, we definitely want to look at that. Yeah, so important, Sherry. I know I've heard you say before, you know, as you're talking to people, of course, there's kind of that balance, right? There's the work that maybe you want to be doing or want to be doing more of, because maybe it's an enjoyable um, product or service that you're working with. Mm -hmm. But we also have to look at that pie chart because where's the money actually coming from? And right now when we're in survival mode, that might mean we have to shift what we're doing a little bit, even as we approach these new markets. So yeah. what, what's maybe another tip, Sherry? What's another thing like that that we should look at? Well, I think other things you can look at, once you've looked at that, the revenue that they produce, what's their buy pattern? If you know you've got great business kicking a year off, but you kind of slow in the summer, we want to know that so that we, as we define these profiles, we may find this market segment or client segment does a lot of business in the summer months, perhaps, or they might be just those who sign a contract for the year with you. But we need to understand, so when you're looking for summer business, you can look through your market segment profiles, your client profiles, and determine which segment is going to allow you to find that summer business. That's just an example. So we wanna look at that. We wanna know the price that they can tolerate. What revenue can this client segment um, produce or tolerate? Is this always going to be a low level, but maybe they, they, they uh, will buy from you in a really need period for yourself, one of your low periods. And that revenue is good then, right? That lower price. Right. So, absolutely. Especially as we're talking survival mode and pandemic and the impact that this has had on all of them. It, have you found that that could impact pricing and what pricing people will tolerate? Definitely. People don't have as much money in the checkbook in some industries. Some industries are doing fantastic. So that's where it's so important to go back to knowing what's happening with your clients, um, industry, their businesses, things like that, because some are, are thriving during this time. So we don't want to leave money on the table either, right? So as salespeople, it's that fine line of asking those questions and knowing where this uh, particular company or industry segment is, this, this segment. So that's where it comes to that last one. You want to provide a brief update on the state of this market on your profile sheet so that that you do know, has it been hit hard through the pandemic? Is it doing strong? Is it rebounding? Have, have jobs been lost? They're not going to come back, things like that. So it's really important we, we, we create all of these tools um, into or all these uh, fields into our account profile. 
Okay. So you've given us so much to work with here. This is a lot of information, a lot of tips. Is there a tool or a system that we can use to help really organize and track and be able to later identify trends? Yes, because so often we just say, I just want a new customers, so I just run out to do it. With this profile, we're going to have a tool on uh, the WLAJ.com website, Julie, so that they can start with that. And it's much easier to start with a tool that you can start to um, put your strategies into than just staring at that white screen on your computer. So we'll provide that tool to get them started. And based on those profiles, this is where you're going to see your gaps. You're going to be able to identify those new um, kind of marketing opportunities that you want to go into. So I think that that's really important. And I think with this, it's important you give yourself the planning time, right? You've got to, in order to strategize new strategies, you've got to give yourself planning time, 520 work hours in a quarter. How are you using eight of those strategy hours for those other 520 And we will continue to track these topics and talk about these strategies every Monday throughout the year. Sherry, thank you so much for sharing your information with us today. Thanks, Julie. For a look at that tool that Sherry talked about, head to WLAJ.com and click Sales Connections. There's no question this has been a time of challenge and change for everyone. Poll after poll shows mental health is a top concern for as many as 40% of Americans. And while there's a full spectrum of issues to address, one thing many people say they miss is connection. So we want to share positive stories of people making a difference with a weekly segment we're calling Heart and Soul Connections. Joining me are four women from the group She Leads Michigan, Michelle Hutchinson, Nancy DeBoer, and Sylvia Williams. Thank you so much for joining us. Michelle, more than ever, there is this human need to connect, which is exactly what She Leads Michigan is all about. We'll be hearing these unique stories each week, Mm -hmm. but Michelle, talk us through what is She Leads and why is this organization so important? Julie, thank you for having me today. I'm very, very happy to talk to you about She Leads Michigan. It fits perfectly into the very words that you just said, which is She Leads Michigan brings a diverse group of Christian women together, and all of them hold leadership positions in their workplace, their government, their homes, in their communities. And as a group, uh, a group of strong women, we seek to honor and thank women of strength for their action in service. Um, to network women relationally, to support one another as we walk through challenges and successes, as we walk out our faith in different environments, and to encourage each one to take bold action to impact society. So She Leads Michigan really seeks to bring modern day solutions to everyday challenges. It's a really exciting group, Julie. It sounds like it, Michelle, and and such a a wide variety of of people that are involved in your organization. Nancy, I want to ask you about that. There's such a diverse group of women that make up She Leads. Women at home with children, trial lawyers with cases before the Supreme Court, politicians, teachers. It seems like the full spectrum. Tell us about the women of She Leads. Yeah, it is amazing. The variety of people that God has brought together. They are handpicked by him. They represent all ages, backgrounds, cultures, denominations, races. Uh, She Leads Michigan really provides a safe platform for the exchange of ideas. And we have a community of faith-focused, independent thinkers. We support and encourage each other, and we're networked together through these trusted relationships in Christ. So She Leads Michigan gives women a voice. And we have a weekly She Speaks broadcast where we explore really tough topics um, that affect every level of society. Sylvia, Nancy just mentioned, you know, just the diversity of women that make up this group. Um, But let's talk about the spiritual side of things. Let's say my faith journey looks different from what I might see or hear, even among the women on this broadcast today. How does that spiritual diversity fit into She Leads? Well, Julie, the uh, Romans 12, four and five says that we are one body. And although we are one body, we have, we are many members in that one body. So we being many are one. And so that speaks of diversity. So She Leads Michigan offers, we are a diverse group and we are faith-based 
and we come together and we recognize one another's uh, diversities and strength. And the, the, the mortar that glues us together is Christ. So although we may be from different denominations and different uh, spiritual backgrounds, we know that the commonality is Christ. And so there is a sisterhood and there are covenant relationships that are formed in the uh, uh, spiritual base that we, we offer. And Sylvia, I know if I can ask a follow-up question, I know you lead, you know, a weekly prayer call and, and, and you just talked about, you know, even here in this broadcast right now, we all look different. We all sound different. We come from different backgrounds, you know, talk to me about how important building that connection is right now with different people coming from different, maybe spiritual spaces. It's very important, especially with the uh, because of the spiritual climate that we live in today, that women don't feel isolated in the midst of the pandemic. And so she leads, we come together and we pray weekly. Initially, we, we thought we would pray for 20 minutes and now we stay on the phone until the Lord um, says he's done. And so we are a group of women who uh, just have a heart for prayer and a heart for God. And in doing that, our hearts are knit together and uh, we provide spiritual support for one another. I love that it sounds like all women are welcome. Before we wrap up, Michelle, um, you and Nancy both co-host a weekly Facebook show for She Leads Michigan called She Speaks. It really started during the pandemic as a way to share stories and bring people together during a time when it really has been so isolating. So tell us about your vision with She Speaks and how this show is helping to bring women together. Yes, we really felt like there was such a need for others to be a part of the conversations that happen in our living room as we share how we walk out our faith or the struggles that we are walking through in life. And to understand that being vulnerable with each other as we walk out high calling is powerful and we learn and we gain skills from one another. And we recognize that we're not alone sometimes or often in the very same process. So it was really this beautiful picture of bringing together women who are walking out their faith calling, changing society, and having open and vulnerable conversations about what that looks like. And I'm so glad, ladies. Thank you for joining me today. Sylvia, Michelle, Nancy will continue to bring us these stories every Monday right here on Expert Connections. After all, we could all use a little dose of heart and soul. To learn more and to watch the full hour-long episodes of She Speaks, head to our website, WLAJ.com, and click Heart and Soul Connections. Thank you for joining us for Expert Connections. I'm Julie Holton. We'll see you back here next Monday. Expert Connections is executive produced by M Connections Marketing Agency in collaboration with Foster Swift Law Firm. Strategic solutions for growth. Super Web Pros, Symposium Labs, Uno Deuce Multimedia, and She Leads Michigan. A special thank you to our Style Connections partners, Polka Dots Boutique, The Standard Spa, and Beauty by Wilder. Visit our Style Spotlight online at expertconnections.tv.